People of Reddit, what is the stupidest thing you've done? Story 1. I got high off my peach on tranquilizers and alcohol. That would already be stupid enough, but my sauced-up brain had bigger plans. Being done with my bender, I decided to go home by public bus, which I had just missed and could see driving down the road. So I did exactly what would be the reasonable and responsible thing to do. I flagged down the cop car that was approaching and asked him to pull over the bus. He asked if I had been drinking, so I said, yes, that's why I'm taking the bus home instead of driving. He said he'd give me a lift, and I got in. I have no recollection of what happened next until the next day, but my mom told me a very nice police officer dropped me off at home, and I had drooled all over his back seat. Story 2. I work as a substitute middle school teacher. At the beginning of each day, the kids listen to the announcements. One time they announced that one of the students who had been battling cancer passed away the night before. So me, being the great guy I am, give the students five minutes of time to sit quietly and reflect. Then I decide to lighten the mood by calling attendance, so I use a bizarre inflection to entertain the students. Called out, Tyler, no response. Call it out again, no response. Finally, one student piped up and said that was the kid that passed away the day before. This was after I called his name out several times with differing tones of voice to be comical, while all the students saw was me bashing the dead kid. Fudge, edit, gilded for being an idiot. Dreams really do come true. Thanks, stranger. Story three. One of my exes and I met in the city. We always went on dates in the city and never close to where we lived. I had just moved to the area. I had heard of the place he lived in but didn't think it was close to where I lived and never really thought about it. Then I started staying over at his place. And when I was going home the following afternoons, I would take the tram into city center, 20 minutes, and then get the bus to my house, another 40 minutes. I honestly thought the village he lived in was far from my house, so I took the route I knew. Turns out he lives a 10-minute walk away. I did this like eight times. Story four. I had diarrhea at the beach from eating seafood and still decided to go on a long walk. I ended up stranded and found a log facing the beach to sit on and surreptitiously poop. Covered it in the big sandbox, as it were. Pulled up my bikini bottoms and felt relief. Only to stand up and realize that there was an entire family sitting on their beach house deck behind me. They saw everything. Edit. I am oddly proud of the thread that has resulted from my story. If you have not read it, trust me. You should. There are so many laughs awaiting you. You rock, Redditor poors. Y'all are some funny fudge. Story 5. After a night of drinking, we went back to my then-boyfriend's place to chill. He turned on the TV, but I had other ideas. I pulled the rolling chair away from his computer desk, placing myself between him the TV. I turned the chair backward, threw my leg over in what I thought was going to be a seductive manner, whipping my hair a little. Ended up putting my foot down on the edge of the wheelie part on the other side, rolled my ankle, and my momentum carried me all the way over to the floor. I hit the ground, the chair back smashed my face, and my nose started bleeding. Not my brightest moment. Story 6. Garage sale, I pull over and go to the carport, where I see a lot of boxes laying around and clothes hanging. So I start having rummage in the boxes, and looking at the clothes, see a guy in the lounge staring at me, giving me stink eye. I think, how are you going to sell anything with that attitude? Never mind, keep on looking. Mostly kids, amp, women's clothes anyway. Guy comes out and says, are you right, mate? I say, yeah, just having a look. Go back out to my car. Nothing of interest there drive down the street and see another sign garage sale, realize the garage sale sign was indicating turn left at the next street. Story 7. You know how you see stupid exam answers? At the age of 12 the whole year, group had to sit an exam to find out what groups we would be put in for science the next year. It asked us to draw and label a table and its uses. I literally drew a flipping table with some smug little unpleasant reading a book at it. I even labeled the flipping book as book and the table and its legs. I still made the top set for science. Every science teacher got a photocopy of that flipping diagram. Every single flipping one. It was pinned to walls, doors, smart boards. Literally, every flipping gadge and mink in my school knew about my monumental fudge-up. Story 8. I have two. The time I ended up in the hospital because of pasta. One night I was doing dishes that I had left for about a week. Uni life. And there was a piece of pasta heavily crusted onto the bottom of the candy. I couldn't get it off with a sponge or with the brush I was using, so I tried to pick it off with my nails. I managed to pick a little bit too hard, and boom, the pasta shard is under my thumbnail up to about the halfway point. 
About ten seconds later, my finger was dripping blood, and I realized that the pasta was actually getting cooked by my blood and visions of awful infection started to run through my head. I decided to play it safe and go to the ER, and the doctor that ended up seeing me three hours later told me that I had made the right choice coming in, which made me feel a bit better. A couple of scalpels, some surgical scissors, and thirty minutes of excruciating pasta extraction later, I walked out of the hospital missing half of my thumbnail. It hurt like an absolute bad person for the next week. I was told that I was the only pasta-related injury any of the doctors in the hospital at the moment had ever seen. The time I, literally, tried to be a helicopter and broke my wrist. I was four years old and on a field trip with my kindergarten class. It was lunchtime and we were all sitting on a jungle gym eating our lunches. For whatever reason, I decided it was a good idea to stop eating my lunch and walk to the top of the jungle gym so I could jump off. Don't ask me to explain it, it's been 17 years, and I'm still amazed at my own inexplicable stupidity. I'm fortunate not to have won a Darwin Award so far. I had recently learned what a hecalopter was, and was amazed that they could fly just by spinning things around. My flawless logic of the day was, if they can do it, why can't I? So, seemingly without any discernible reason, Little four-year-old me put down his sandwich, marched to the top of the jungle gym, put his arms out at his sides, and jumped off while spinning around in my best heckalopter impression. And that was how I got my first ambulance ride. Story 9. When I was roughly three years old, I was playing around in the living room whilst my older brother, 13 at the time, watches television. Eventually, I get bored of whatever annoying toy I was playing with. I start toddling on over to the kitchen to find scattered toys or to find my mum. However, on the way, I decided to take a nap. A nap on a flipping radiator with heat blasting out of it. Apparently, I had been there for a good minute before my brother realized my face was melting on the radiator. My brother takes my cheek off the radiator and screams for our mum. I got rushed immediately to the hospital, where my mum was questioned profusely in regards to child neglect. She's a great mom, and she says the ordeal was the worst thing she has ever experienced. Got a scar on my cheek from my idiocy. This isn't the only time I messed up up as a youngster, sadly. Story 10. I fell asleep on a roof. A slanted roof. I rolled over. Ever have one of those dreams where you are falling? I woke up just before I hit the ground. I rode my bike under a truck. I made a slingshot that fired metal discs through trees. I took these plates off my father's cars and bikes. I made a stump remover, basically an IED for farm work. Got confused and got the measurements wrong. I figured this out while a two-ton stump was about 80 feet in the air. I thought that my knife-juggling skills would impress girls at a party. I had been drinking heavily, had close relationship on a trampoline. Advice if you ever want to try this. Don't. Bananas can break. Had close relationship in the water at a beach. Advice if you want to try this. Don't. Sand gets everywhere, especially if you are uncircumcised. Shot myself with a .22 bullet, not the gun, just the bullet. Well, and a hammer. Took a half pound of gunpowder to school. Tried to write my name on the football field. Turns out the guy with the distinctive name and no eyebrows can easily be identified. Another time I tried to jump a fence on a motorcycle. A barbed wire fence? Strangely, if this had gone just a little worse, the beach thing would have gone better. Parked my dad's car the wrong way. That is in a swimming pool. Tried to help a dog who had been hit by a car. Had a large portion of my face torn open. That being said, I would do this again. Lots more, but I am a little tired. My wife thinks I'm stupid, me too. Story 11. Me and my cousin were sharing a room at my grandma's. We had just switched out the old TV with a nicer one. Rather than moving it out of the way, we just left it in the hall. Like a couple of lazy dumbasses, we figured we'd just move it tomorrow. Cut to 11 p.m., we hear a loud scream and large thud right outside our door. We run outside to find Grandma in a heap on the floor. She was going to bed but didn't turn the hall light on because she wrongly assumed that her grandsons weren't morons. She bruised her hip and I still feel terrible about it to this day. Story 12. A. Stepped on a rake to see if it flies up like in cartoons. Gave myself a black eye. 2. Turned a hand with a glass of water in upside down to look at my watch. D. Spent half an hour looking for a toy, getting more and more frustrated. It was in my hand. 8. Have an insane blind spot for keys. I lose my keys almost every day unless I consciously put then eye on one specific spot. Forgot, ouch. Made a pizza in a cast iron pan in the oven. Must have been getting on for 200C when I took it out and carefully put it on a mat. Turned to do something else for a few seconds, turned back, and instinctively grabbed the pan handle. Not just a touch, a full-on grab. I even managed to lift it an inch or so before the pain hit. 
I can honestly say it's by far the worst pain I've ever had, and I burst a stitch after my circumcision at 19. Story 13. I submitted this to another thread a while back, but I hope you guys like this one. So I used to get really bad head rushes when I stood up too fast. This happened a lot when I was in my early teens. Anyways, I was lying down watching TV when my dad tells me to turn the heat down. So I get up and feel kind of dazed, but continue to walk behind the couch towards the thermostat. On the long walk to the thermostat, my head rush starts to get more intense. I lose vision and lean against my electric piano for support. I lean there for about 30 seconds while it passes. When my vision finally returns, I am standing over my piano thinking, turn down the heat, turn down the heat. So my blood-deprived brain starts to bash the keys of the piano, hoping that the heat will turn it down. I am very confused at this point, but I think I know what I'm doing. Then I get the realization. I thought, wow, I'm so dumb. The heat isn't turning down because the piano isn't on. Stupid me. So I press the on button on the keyboard and start bashing the keys even more. Random notes start playing loudly, which makes me jump, finally realizing my true folly. I laugh out loud at how stupid my brain was, and proceed to the thermostat to finally turn down the heat. This all happened within the span of about 40 seconds to a minute. The End Story 14 I grew up as a really poor kid in a really poor part of Ukraine. We would break into industrial factory storage yards and just climb really tall cow. You know those videos of Russians climbing really tall radio towers? Yeah, that's pretty much the cow I'd do. One factory made some stuff out of glass and had these meter-long glass tubes that were about a half inch in diameter. We would, of course, steal those things and use them like blow dart tubes. For ammo, we'd use these really acidic berries and just shoot each other. Getting hit with one stung about as much as getting hit with an airsoft pellet. If you got it into an open wound or an eye, it would really sting due to the acidity. My summers were filled with nightly bonfires in which we would often reach a level of stupid you can't imagine. We would throw aerosol cans into fires just to have them explode. We would take apart old car batteries, remove the lead, put lead into tin cans to melt it, and then dump into poor molds we'd make in the ground to make little lead discs, crosses, ninja stars, or whatever else might have seemed like a good idea. Countless times someone would get battery acid on their clothes or skin or otherwise get burned. This was many years ago, and I'm now a fairly well-off man living in Canada. But remembering this makes me wonder how in the hell I didn't pass away or lose a limb. Story 15. I tried to rob an on-duty cop. I used to work at a gas station. Every night at this gas station, police officers would come in for some coffee and whatnot. And over time, I got to know a couple of them. Over time, it got to where we would talk about the weird cow they see on the regular and whatnot, and the cow they would help us deal with. I got some good cop stories from them, and some even better gas station adventures from my days, if anyone is interested. Anyway, one day I'm minding my own business stocking the cooler when I hear Officer Ingram talking to my manager over the speakers in the cooler. They are there so that whoever is in the cooler can hear what is going on up front. I decide to come out of the cooler with my sweatshirt and ski mask on and sneak up on Officer Ingram and see how a cop reacts to being robbed. So I start sneaking around the store solid snake style and I manage to go unseen by Officer Ingram. My manager, who was having a conversation with him, saw me, but didn't give me away since it wasn't unusual for me to wear the ski mask outside the cooler. I get to the counter and I put my box cutter's blunt end, safety first, against the back of his neck and tell him in a voice much deeper than my regular voice to don't do anything stupid and call for help or anything. Just give me your flipping wallet. My manager was speechless. Officer Ingram didn't even flinch. He just took a sip of his coffee and told me that I must be the biggest idiot he had ever come across. It was at this point that I noticed my manager's eyes had dropped, and I noticed that Ingram already put his hand on his gun. Right as I heard the safety click, I dropped the act and told him it was me and that I was just playing. Ingram starts laughing out loud and tells me to chill out. He had seen me sneaking out the cooler and around the store on the computer screen up front with the live feed of the security cameras around the store. We had a good laugh about it immediately after. For a few days after that, when the other officers would come in, they would put their hands in the air or just throw me their wallets. It later dawned on me that if it wasn't for the manager leaving the security camera live feed on screen, I could have gotten shot and charged with all sorts of cow. TLDR, pulled a box cutter on a cop as joke. Cop knew it was me and decided to scare me senseless. Didn't go to jail or get bullets in my tummy. It was a good day. Story 16. Threw frozen chicken in about six inches of boiling vegetable oil and started my house on fire. 
lit my friend's hay shed on fire, which exploded when the fire reached 20 full propane tanks, jumped off my house to my trampoline. Missed. Bit my tongue almost completely off edit. I also once cooked some trout on the BBQ grill and some foam that the cat sleeps on under the grill caught fire, so I threw it off the deck and it landed on the tramp and burned a hole in it. Edit 2. Just ten minutes ago, I was play fighting with a girl I get with occasionally, and she lifted her leg to kick me in the ball, so I grabbed her leg and out of instinct lifted and pushed, which sent her to her peach hard, and she hit her head decently hard, and the wall edit three. I say out of instinct because I'm a wrestler, and my brain just automatically thought I was doing a single leg. Edit four. I was having a bonfire, dumping gas on the fire, and the fire got a little too high and lit the spout of the gas can, and it, well, exploded and lit my shirt sleeve on fire. Jesus, I need to stay away from fire. Story 17. I'm smart in general, but sometimes I derp out completely and look like the biggest moron. Once I was reading a horror novel, and I had my finger underneath the page. I turned the page and got startled because apparently I'd won. Forgotten my finger was there, and two, forgotten I even had that finger because I didn't even recognize it as mine for a moment. I only recently found out that if you put hot water in a candy instead of cool water, it'll boil faster and so it shaves like ten minutes off your cooking time. The other day, I tried to open a can of evaporated milk, but the can opener just made a weird noise and didn't do anything. I got frustrated for a few seconds before realizing that it wasn't the can I was holding. It was my glass measuring cup. I'm terrified of roaches. Once I saw a fat roach on the floor of my bedroom and literally stood there for about ten minutes with a shoe in my hand, trying to work up the courage to throw it. Then I noticed the roach hadn't moved the whole time. I mustered up the courage to get closer and get a better look at it, and realized it wasn't a roach. It was just a black smudge on the floor that had collected a little lint. It's worth mentioning that I'm nearsighted and didn't have my glasses on at the time. For months, I really truly thought you could download RAM. I had seen that Download More RAM site and read some reviews, which I later found out were joking and I told my mom and one of my friends about it. My mom looked at me with this deadpan face. My friend started cracking the hell up. It wasn't until later that I learned you cannot download RAM. I am not computer savvy. I keep mistakenly calling surround sound sound around. I think I'd been saying it for years, but nobody corrected me until I was in a conversation with some friends and said something like, yeah, I have sound around headphones. They're expensive, but so worth it. My boyfriend interrupted me and said, can you repeat that? I did, and everyone burst out laughing. I once derped out and asked my dad if the Rio Grande was actually in Rio de Janeiro. My dad just went, there's no such thing as a stupid question, but that was pretty close. I'm both my parents' smartest and dumbest child. Story 18. My parents left the country one summer for two weeks and left me alone, so I decided it was a perfect opportunity to have some of my closest friends over often. My rents lived out in the middle of nowhere with the nearest neighbors a 100 yards away. Plus, the house had a pool and a hot tub, so it was a perfect setup. The first night I had people over, the hot tub got nasty. We may have exceeded maximum capacity a little bit. So my bright idea was to siphon all the water out of the tub directly into the pool and refill the tub with the hose. Worked perfect. Hot tub clean, pool a little bit warmer. The next night, word was catching on, and the group of friends increased some in size. Again, the hot tub water was almost opaque by next morning. No problem. Hot tub water went into the pool. Refresh tub with clean hose water. Third night. Yuck, yuck, yuck. But you know the drill. Hot tub gunk dumped into the pool. What the? Where's the bottom of the pool? Now I had a problem. In my efforts to keep the tub clean, I had neglected the pool water, which had been slowly turning into a sickly grayish green color. Uh-oh. Filters should take care of it by the time parents come home in a week, right? I thought to myself, but what if it didn't? How could I ensure the pool water would be crystal clear for my spectacularly anal parents? That's when the genius idea bulb went off in my head. Twenty minutes later, I had tens of thousands of gallons of water roaring out of the pool, working its way down the mountain like a grand liquid chlorinated avalanche. Oh, no, you didn't, you say. Oh, yes, I did. I was feeling smug about my dirty water problem solution when I noticed the shape of the inside of the pool becoming less defined. You see, we have a vinyl skin for the interior of the pool, and guess what held it down against the concrete? That's right, the water! To my horror, the blue skin was methodically sucking itself off the walls and bottom like a yawning college student, extricating his hungover body off his gunky bathroom floor. Immediately, I stopped the exodus of water, pool now only a couple feet deep in the far side. 
The shallow side was a little wrinkled, but I could salvage the deep end. Now, how was I going to fill up the pool again? Well, what worked for the hot tub? Oh yeah, the water hose. I was sure it could fill up the pool in five days, so I turned on the water confident that the pool would be full of clean well water presently. Oh yeah, that's right, the house used well water. And after a few days of pumping, the water didn't flow out so quickly anymore. Five days from the beginning of the refill, the water was just reaching the shallow end, and Mom and Dad were coming home the next day. Next time, the Tan Parents come home. Update Part 2, here as requested. And now, Tan Pool 2, Fiasco Boogaloo. For the last 24 hours before my parents flew back into Roanoke, I was so terrified I was physically ill. By this point, at least the water reached the far side of the pool, so the vinyl on that end was no longer a rubber trampoline, but a wrinkled giant model of the Appalachian Mountains. If the Appalachians were covered in gigantic blue pebble wallpaper, that is. I tried putting the pool cover on the water to hide the shallowness. Unfortunately, the Lord did not answer my prayers and make it magically thick and opaque enough to hide the damage or depth of the water. Forlornly, I thought about what was probably going to be the last few hours of my life. I asked friends to come over for sympathy and support, but no one had enough of a death wish to come with me to greet my parents. As if dealing with my parents' arrival at home wasn't enough, I had to pick them up from the airport. I hopped into their forerunner and probably for the only time in my life, drove under the speed limit the whole way to Roanoke. I tell you that to this day, every cheerful teeny bopper song that K92 played on that drive still brings chills to my spine. A pox on you, CC Music Factory. I finally got to the terminal, just in time to see my executioners pull up to the gate. I could clearly hear my heart thumping as one by one the passengers disembarked through the door. Could it be? Maybe they missed their flight and I wouldn't have to deal with this for several more. Tanman, we're over here. My parents, as always came out with the last few passengers, haggard from their 20-hour journey from India. To them, it was still Indian time, something like 3 a.m. in the morning, but they were happy to see me. My mom rushed up to me and hugged me hard. My dad gave me the fatherly half-hug pat on the back. I could imagine those fingers turning into claws shredding my heart out. Dutifully, I kept my fake plastic smile and lugged their luggage, four 80-pound bags, the airline's allowed limit, back to the car and started the drive home. We discussed trivial matters about the flight on the meandering drive down I-81, 10 miles per hour under the speed limit. I can't remember what I asked and commented about, but I do remember the ringing getting louder and louder in my ears and the urge to puke on the steering wheel getting harder and harder to suppress. Suddenly I broke. I looked at my father, my lungs empty and diaphragm full of lead, and told him, Dad, I did something. My father, perceptively realizing his son does more things wrong than right, raised his eyebrow. Hmm? Something really bad. I couldn't hear my mom in the back seat, which meant she was holding her breath. I could see my dad's eyes get imperceptibly wider in preparation for the evil stare, which was known to make several children and grown men soil themselves uncontrollably. What did you do? He finally asked. He was probably expecting a deck chair to be broken, perhaps an unmowed lawn, which is the usual extent of my parentless mischief. I, uh, um, uh... Finally, I drawled it out, emptied the pool. He just sat there stunned, processing the information for a few seconds or ten minutes. I can't remember. I do remember fleeting look puzzlement. His mind was churning, trying to figure out what this meant. Could his son actually be this colossally stupid, his own flesh and blood? My father was first in his class in school. My mother was first in her class in school. Genetics dictate that they have a son with a decent amount of common sense. So his reaction, his deducing of what was going on, finally came up with the only sensible conclusion and reaction. My father laughed. He roared so loud that I had to wince a little, but it dawned on me that I had been worrying for nothing. My dad understood that mistakes happen? That is really funny, he snorted. I felt like a big weight was lifting off my shoulders. Things were going to be all rich. Did you really think I was going to fall for that joke? He finished, still chuckling. You almost had me there for a second. The weight returned, double force. No, Dad, I mean it. I really emptied the pool. I think he was pondering the possibility that I had a UVA grad for an obstetrician and whether his real son had been switched at birth. Not the whole thing, he asked, still in disbelief. No, I numbly answered. He looked a little relieved. Just a few feet, kind of a foot or two off the bottom. The very bottom. Do you know how Caucasian people get red when they are angry, scared, upset? Well, it's a little less obvious on Indians given our darker skin.
At that moment, my father could have been an albino. I've never seen his face change color that quickly or intensively. It's a good thing I was driving or he might have attacked me on the spot. I could tell you what he yelled at me for the next 15 miles. But thankfully, I don't speak the language of my heritage that well. And that is mostly what he cursed at me with. Basically, I think it was a thousand-word Indian epithet for colossally stupid, lousy child who cannot possibly be of my loins. Eventually, he calmed down a little and succeeded in bringing his hands down from a choking gesture and took fewer minutes for air. Then he yelled again, then rested, yelled some more, then quieted outright. Then he saw the pool. Needless to say, all hell broke loose. What happened next must have been pretty bad. Because I don't remember it that well but I do remember thanking my lucky stars that I still had an apartment at Tech to which I could escape. But like all fathers, time, and a probable investigation to confirm I was really his child, calmed him down enough to remember he loved and could forgive me. Eventually, a tanker truck full of water came by to fill up the rest of pool, and life began to return to something somewhat normal. My father, the amateur roast master, realized he had great fodder to embarrass his son with at all future family and social functions, and learned to speak to me in a civil tone again. That is until a few weeks later when our water well dried up. Story 19. I've got a good one. Too bad it'll probably get buried, but I've got to tell it. So my wife went to Vegas on vacation with her friends. I was still youngish at the time, so I did the only natural thing and went out drinking. Unfortunately, I got completely obliterated. When I got home, I jumped in the shower because, well, because it made sense at the time, I guess. I started to get sick and climbed over to the toilet to throw up. After I finished, I went to push myself up, and when I put my weight on the toilet, it cracked in half. The porcelain god was fighting back, or so it seemed. I slashed my hand on the edge of the toilet after it cracked, and because of the alcohol in my system, it bled profusely. And this was about when all reason left me. I was bleeding and fall down drunk. I didn't understand why there was water flooding the bathroom, so I flushed the destroyed toilet several times, flooding the bathroom even further. I then called my wife and left her this voicemail. Hi. I'm not sure where I am. I'm not sure who I am. There's blood everywhere. There's just blood everywhere. I gotta go. She was sitting in the airport with her friends about to fly home when she got the message. She tried calling me a few times, but I decided to pass out and bleeding in my bed after leaving bloody handprints down the hall on the wall while steadying myself. When she couldn't get a hold of me, she then called my parents because the message scared the cow out of her. My parents drove over to my place and let themselves in. The next thing I knew, my dad was poking me with a broom, shouting, Are you dead? After waking up and cleaning up the mess with me, my mom sat me down and had a nice chat. I felt really bad for the scare I put into my parents, but it's eventually become a favorite story told around the campfire. Story 20. Let's see where to start. I once terminated a pint of vodka straight on a dare. Spent the rest of the night ralphing. I fell for a prank of laying a stick across a shovel handle and then stomping the shovel spade to see how high the stick would go. I had my windshield tinted to 5% on my car. I sent a Nairobi prince some cash so I'd get a big return. I really did. I voted for Ross Perot in 92. I volunteered for several things in boot camp without knowing what they were. I rear-ended a cop car. During the questioning, I got the involuntary giggles, and when the cop asked if I thought it was funny, I said, yes. In Little League, I chased a ball under the bleachers from the backside. Imagine running fast as the bleacher seats get lower and lower. Crack my head open. Hit on a starting linebacker's girlfriend at a frat party. I even knew it was his girlfriend. Notice my low oil pressure light on in the car, decided I could make it to the next exit ten miles away. Took bowling as a hypers class in college. Cheated on the final exam and got caught. Decided to jump in the water to pour out the water. Left the boat in gear. Spent a half hour trying to pick up a quarter someone had super glued to a sidewalk. I'm really not as dumb as all this sounds. I'm just impulsive. Story 21. This was my dad, but it was hilarious to witness. He wanted a sandwich, and he got all of his condiments ready. The tomatoes, lettuce, onions, everything. And then he goes to get the mayo out of the fridge. He drops it. And it goes everywhere. Like I'm talking a blast radius of like four feet all over the cabinets, getting on some seat cushions in all the crevices. After an hour of cleaning it up, his sandwich is still there. And he's like, I think I have another jar in the fridge. He goes into the fridge, gets it out, and let's just say we spent another 90 minutes cleaning up mayo. For the next month, our kitchen smelled slightly of spoiled, rotten mayonnaise. Story 22. Story time. This is super hazy for me to tell because I was very, very drunk, but I'll do my best. 
Basically, I was out bar hopping with two of my friends in the middle of January. I had made it my New Year's resolution to quit smoking candy, so now it was time to go out and get hammered. The night was entirely messed up from the start. My one friend kept pulling out a knife and going on about how he could fudge us up, but he won't because we are friends. Yada, yada, yada. That's not really part of the injury, but sort of sets the mood of the whole evening. After wandering around the downtown for quite some time, being your average drunk, kicking over garbage bins, getting rejected from a couple bars for being too wasted, I decided it would be a grand idea to duck into an alley and take a shortcut, because that would be hilarious. So I go down this alley and come to an eight-foot-high fence. No problem. I start climbing, reach the top, and throw my drunk peach over the other side. Well, I must have landed funny because I completely shattered my foot. I laid there for a couple of minutes, wondering what the fudge just happened, and then passed out for 45 minutes to an hour. By the time I woke up, I was freezing my peach off and still hadn't come up with a solution to get home. I called my friend a few times and left a couple of apparently hilarious messages about how I think I broke my foot. Don't know where I am, ECT. Time to take action and formulate a plan. I got up and tried hopping around on one foot, not very successfully to try to find a way out. I was in the empty parking lot of the local cable company. After some time looking for a way out, I realized I was completely fenced in. I grew a pair of balls and threw myself back over the fence, trying not to land on the broken foot. No success. Cue immediate blackout phase. I passed out on the sidewalk, leaning against the fence I had just jumped. When I woke up, there was a homeless man all up in my face. Are you okay, man? He asked. I told how I was smashed and that I think I broke my foot and need to find a way home. He says he will call me a cab. I give him my phone and he calls for me. I can't thank him enough and told him I don't have any money to give him. He says it's not a problem and gets me in the cab when it arrives. Don't really remember to much after that. Woke up on my friend's couch in the morning, my foot throbbing in pain. He's still drunk from the night before, but he takes me to the hospital. I see that homeless guy around from time to time, usually silently hanging out in front of McDonald's, with his hand out waiting for donations. Anytime I see him, I go in and get him a couple double cheeseburgers or a Mac meal. Nicest, most kind-hearted guy I have ever encountered. Story 23. I'd been waiting all week for an important phone call. And so, naturally, when the house phone finally rang, I ran for my life to try and get it before it rang out. Now, it's important to note here that the majority of our flooring was slate tiles. It's equally important to note that our kitchen skylight had recently broken due to a hailstorm and was letting through a decent amount of water, which was gathering and creating a fairly large puddle. You see where this is going, right? I ran so hard. I was nearly there, and all of a sudden I reached the puddle, and I slipped. Oh boy, did I slip. I fell face first. I tried to lessen the damage that I knew would come to my face by sticking my arm out. It didn't work. And instead of just ending up with two black eyes and six shattered, I mean this literally, I was spitting shards of tooth out of my mouth. Teeth. I ended up with two black eyes, six shattered teeth, and a broken wrist. All because I decided to run for the phone. You may be curious, did I ever find out who was ringing when the incident occurred? Yes, yes, I did. It was a telemarketer. Edit. Obligatory you gilded me for that. Post. Thank you, kind stranger. Story 24. It was winter, and we'd just gotten into the house from a snowstorm outside. We were wet and cold, so we took our clothes off and stood by the fire. This was at my friend's house, and so I wanted to warm my clothes up so I wouldn't have to walk around in cold, wet stuff the rest of the evening. To that end, I put my pair of socks on the edge of the wood stove, intending to leave them there for a second. Well, expectedly, they started to melt. The smell arising from the melting socks triggered my friend to investigate. Not wanting the house to burn down, she lifted the socks off of the stove. Not wanting her hands to burn, she tossed them as soon as she grabbed them. I mentioned I was, right? Hot melted sock landed on my banana. Story 25. When I was 18, I was walking home drunk with a couple of sober friends. It was about 1 a.m. As we got on my road, I noticed a small snake slithering into someone's yard. We got closer and I expertly identified it as a copperhead. Well, cow, those people have kids. I can't let the snake go in their yard, but it would be wrong to terminate the little guy. He was just living, so I go up and grab him by his tail. This little guy was surprisingly calm and didn't really react. My friends offered no advice other than, man, you're gonna get bit. I tell my friend who lives next door to the house we're at to go get me a box to put him in so I can take him down to the creek and let him go. He says, I don't have a box. I reply, unpleasant person, everyone has a box. Go get a flipping box. 
So he goes into his house, leaving our other friend and myself, holding this snake's tail, standing outside. He eventually comes back out with a water bottle. I says, a flipping water bottle? That's all I had. Whatever. I try to get the little bad person to crawl in, but it quickly becomes apparent that he has no intention of doing so. Only one option left. I've watched enough Crocodile Hunter, I know what to do. I just need to quickly grab right behind the jaws and squeeze tightly enough so he can't turn and bite me. I position my hand above his head, take a few deep breaths, and have a go. Well, right about the time I was grabbing his head, it occurs to me that maybe I shouldn't do this and should abort. So I hesitate, loosen my grip, and the bad person turns and bites my pointer finger on my left hand. I quickly got him off of me, but I had a little hole in my finger with a single drop of blood coming out. I say, cow, he bit me, I gotta go home. My friends go to their respective houses and I walk into mine, wake my mom up and say, I got bit by a copperhead. You have to take me to the hospital. Now I've read that copperhead bites are usually nothing serious and often don't even require a hospital visit. Plus, he only got me with one fang, so I only got half a dose of venom. Well, I guess young snakes don't control the amount of venom they give because I spent the next three days in the hospital, my left hand and arm swollen to like twice their normal size. I ended up with horrible blisters and tissue damage and had to go to physical therapy for several months. My friends felt no pity for me. Story 26. When I was older than I care to admit, I was walking through Walmart and saw a Razor scooter, the kind that can propel itself forward by the back wheel turning. I thought I might as well try it, so I bought it, took it home, and immediately started riding down a giant hill by my house. As you can probably guess, I was going too fast, and a car was coming. It was about this time that I reached back with my foot to push the brake. Now, if you've ever taken so much as a second glance at one of those scooters, you know that they don't have brakes. I realized I was in trouble about then, and decided that the best way to slow myself down would be to put my foot lightly on the ground. Unfortunately, there is no lightly at those speeds, so I flipped over the front of the scooter and had to crawl out of the road. I bloodied my arms and legs pretty badly, but the best part was that the car that was coming up... Yeah, it was my crush. You can spend two minutes reading it. Story 27. Was walking into work. There was a tiny sliver of ice at the rear bumper of my car. I slipped on it while wearing slip-resistant shoes and landed on my left arm shoulder. I was sore and bruised that day. Twenty-four hours later, I couldn't move my arm at all. Went to urgent care and they told me it was nothing, without touching me or an x-ray. Three weeks later, the pain is the same. Worse, so I demand to be sent elsewhere and ended up spending the next 4.5 months in physical therapy because I had royally messed up up my shoulder and the first place missed it. The most common joke I heard about that fall was, at least you got ice on it right away. Story 28. It is my time to shine. You want stupid? I've got stupid in spades. As a child, I thought my older brother locked me out on the front porch. The front door had French pane-style windows, and I was knocking on the frame between two panes to get someone's attention to let me in. I got distracted by something and turned my head and knocked on the glass instead, shattering it. Thankfully, my godmother, who happened to be a surgeon, was visiting the house and gave me five stitches with needle and thread. Next up, the Huffy. The park across the street had a BMX track that we'd play on when there was nobody there. The first time I tried to take the final jump, I apparently blacked out as soon as I left the ground. My little brother runs up as I come to and says, Why did you let go of the bike? Huffy, part two. The way home from school was six blocks uphill, two blocks down, about the same elevation change. The Huffy had pedal brakes, so I'd get speed going downhill and see how long of a tire mark I could leave on the sidewalk. One evening during rush hour, I attempted to leave a mark and missed the pedal, butt planting on the seat. In a panic, I could only watch in horror as I approached the busy intersection at the bottom of the hill where I was supposed to turn right. Luckily, I slammed into a car that was stopped trying to turn right. Luckily, as the alternative was going out into traffic. Huffy the Coda. The handlebar grips eventually wore to the point where the handlebar itself was poking through the end. As I tried to turn right into my driveway, I hit a patch of sand causing the front tire to lose grip, turn a full 90 degrees, and then catch on a crack in the sidewalk, stopping me abruptly and slamming my chest into the exposed bar. Nice circle scar on my chest, I've broken my arm pitching. It was carnival day at work, and they had one of those radar how fast can you pitch inflatables set up. Six pitches, 66 miles per hour, 66, 66, 69, 71. Pop, spiral fracture of the distal humerus. Dislocated shoulders. Bilateral, but not simultaneously, thank goodness. 
The original injury was from running suicide sprints on an asphalt parking lot with a bit of a grade to it. The losing squad had to do push-ups, and in a vain attempt to avoid push-ups, I went full tilt and actually tilted a bit too far. Rather than scraping up my face, I decided sticking my arm out and sustaining massive road rash on my arms and legs in addition to the dislocation was preferable. Embarrassing ways I've dislocated my shoulder before I had it repaired. Sneezing, putting on a t-shirt, falling asleep with my arm across my forehead, lifting up my kid, and high-fiving, miscellaneous, sitting on the kitchen table as a kid, watching the hot oil popcorn popper do its thing. Go to get off the table, kick the popper, and spill hot oil on my leg. Ended up with a lovely four-inch blister that looked like a slug attached to my leg. Grabbed an electrified barbed wire fence on a barb, dropped a tire rim on my foot. It was being used as a fire ring, and we were relocating it. Standing on a ladder drilling something into the ceiling, I locked the drill into the on position and then tried to tuck it under my arm while I fiddled with something else. The head of the drill attempted to eat my shirt and me in the shirt as well. Electric shock while doing dishes. Turned on the garbage disposal with one hand in the sink water and the other hand on the switch, ready to turn it off. The water on my hand ran down into the switch, completing the circuit. Trying to budge a stuck zipper with a pair of pliers, the pliers slipped off and smacked me in the forehead, hard enough to question whether I had sustained a concussion or not. I never grabbed the barrel of a hot soldering iron. Corollary, don't do it twice. Softball practice on a field shared by polo horses. Positioned deep shortstop on the grass, fielded a grounder to my left and spun to throw to first. My left foot ended up in a horse divot, and I rolled it really bad. For months, it hurt if I stepped on a sidewalk seam where there was less than an inch height difference between the two panels. 